Asian stocks are rallying to close a volatile trading week as the Chinese central bank provided more stimulus for the world's second largest economy. Monetary authorities in Beijing surprised markets on Friday, slashing interest rates beyond expectations and giving domestic output a boost. It comes amid a growing list of signs that the Asian giant faces a slowdown or even an economic contraction due to strict lockdowns related to the pandemic. Shares on the Chinese mainland rose 1.5%, and in Hong Kong, the benchmark was up almost 3%. Meanwhile, Japanese stocks also surged after the government said inflation topped 2% in April. Now, higher inflation is normally a headache for policymakers, but in Japan, it's a sign of rising activity after decades of falling consumer prices, which have limited corporate profits. For more on the story, let's go to Craig Earlham. He's a senior market analyst at Owanda in London. Welcome back to the program, Craig. Now, finally, some activity from the Chinese central bank. Investors had been waiting for this rate cut. How important is this for investors, not just in Asia, but in the U.S. and Europe? Important in China. Uh, we have seen that they've set relatively ambitious growth targets for this year of 5.5%. And it's clear, it was clear in the first quarter that there was going to be more stimulus needed in order to achieve those targets. The lockdowns that we've now seen over the last month or two really does ramp up the need for that additional stimulus. We've seen massive fiscal spending uh, from the Chinese government, and we expect there'll probably be more over the course of the year because those growth targets have become almost unachievable because of what's happened over the last month or two. The central bank has been relatively quiet since January, but this latest move now cutting the five-year loan prime rate by 15 basis points, which exceeded expectations, is clearly a nod to the need to ramp up activity, and particularly in the property sector, which has had a really tough year with the difficulties of Evergrande and with the credit squeeze that we've seen there uh, throughout the sector, this 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 cut in the five-year loan prime rate is clearly a nod to a, a really important industry between the actual property sector itself and all the industries that rely on it. It accounts for around a quarter of the economy. So clearly, China is now turning towards that sector once again and saying, we need you if we're going to revive growth back towards the levels which we wanted to achieve at the start of the year. So a steady recovery in China, assuming that happens. What does that mean for oil prices, which, of course, is feeding inflationary pressures in every part of the world? Absolutely. We've seen oil prices have remained extremely elevated over the last a month or so above $100. And that's come despite the fact that we've seen those lockdowns in China, which has actually created downside pressure in oil prices. As we've seen in over the last week or so, talk of the reopening, zero COVID cases in Shanghai, for example, for a few days, we've seen oil prices on the rise once more. And the, the closer we move to a full reopening in China and full economic activity is going to create more upward pressure ultimately on these oil prices. Uh, and that is a problem for the rest of the world. The downside could come from the rest of the world, though, we've seen the UK now preparing for a recession. The Bank of England uh, alluded to such a, in its recent monetary policy report. The US is clearly becoming increasingly less confident that it can manufacture a soft landing, which could ultimately mean a recession in the US and other parts of Europe as well. So that could lead to some demand destruction, which could create some offsetting pressures here. But at this moment in time, it does seem the path of least resistance is to the upside in these oil prices. And the reopening of China is only going to exacerbate that. All right. Craig Erlem from Owanda in London. Thank you for joining the show as always. Thank you.